The Civil War was one of the bloodiest wars in American history. The divide between the North and the South widened as shots were fired on Fort Sumter in April of 1861. Given the complexities of the conflict, slaves and free blacks were aware of the tensions between the two regions. Much like the American Revolution, African Americans struggled under the bondage of slavery and the prospect of a war that may determine their future. African Americans sought refuge amongst the Union not only because of Lincoln's infamous Emancipation Proclamation, which took effect in 1863, but also blacks realized the Union's stance towards contrabands, or slaves that sought refuge amongst the Union military, through a series of acts. According to the Fugitive Slave Law of 1850, runaway slaves were required to be returned to their masters. However, Union forces were receiving so many black fugitive slaves that they began to include them in the war effort. The series of acts that helped establish the Union's position on slavery were the First and Second Confiscation Acts. The First Confiscation Act defined that slaves used in the Confederate war effort were forfeited to the Union. The Second Confiscation Act declared freedom for all slaves in the rebelling states. Once enlisted in the Union military, African Americans contributed to the war effort through numerous jobs like cooks, servants, and even informants. The new labor force proved to be vital to the Union Navy, and many blacks even participated in naval battles. Slaves used existing passageways and routes, more commonly known as the Underground Railroad, to reach Union lines in coastal areas. Although these routes were traveled on for many generations, the risks were still high. Slaves that escaped plantations risked being caught by slave patrols or even fired upon by unsuspecting Union soldiers. George S. Gear, one of the crew members on board the USS Monitor, recalled witnessing the dangers of runaway slaves. I was on deck the other day, and the body of a Negro came floating down. He had probably been shot while trying to escape. It was a sad-looking sight for me. Not only did the runaway slaves have to worry about being caught, but they also faced challenges such as shortages of food and traveled across dangerous terrain in order to reach their destinations. Many of the African Americans that served with the Union Navy served on board a new and revolutionary vessel, the Ironclad. The USS Monitor and the CSS Virginia are the most famous examples of 19th century maritime advancement and the vessels were indispensable to both navies. With a strong and steady supply of contrabands and free black Union sailors, the Union Navy managed to debut the skills and contributions of African Americans during the war effort. The stories of Sia Carter and the other African Americans aboard the most infamous ironclad, the USS Monitor, are examples of only a few of the many experiences of African Americans during the Civil War. Because most African Americans and the Union Navy never left written accounts of their stories, historians have had to rely on the notes and diaries of white Union sailors who served with them in order to better understand African Americans' experiences. Nevertheless, it is clear that African Americans were willing to risk their lives for a cause that would ensure their future and the future of their children, a future of freedom and independence from slavery. Sia Carter is one of the most well-known contrabands that made it on board the USS Monitor. On May 16, 1862, William F. Keeler, the paymaster on board the Monitor, recounted to his wife the night that Sia came on board the ship. Our night watch was armed, with instructions to hail every boat coming in sight and fire immediately if no answer is returned. The first night after getting here, I was upon the point of turning when Boat Ahoy, followed by a musket shot, led me to conclude that something had turned up. The shout of boarders from our worthy captain and valorous first lieutenant was followed by a stampede from all the staterooms for the deck. I found the vast array of monitors armed to the teeth, drawn up confronting the enemy, a poor trembling contraband, he was pretty thoroughly frightened by being shot at by our guard and soon found his voice. Crying at the pitch of his voice, Oh, Lord, mister, oh, don't shoot. I's a black man, mister, I's a black man. Sia had reached freedom. Also known as Sia Hewlett, Sia Carter was a runaway slave from Shirley Plantation in Charles City County, Virginia. He was one of over a hundred slaves owned by a Confederate colonel named Hill Carter. According to Keeler, he said his master called all his slaves together and told them that if any of them went on board of the Yankee ships, the Yankees would carry them out to sea, tie a piece of iron about their necks, and throw them overboard. Contrary to what he was told, just four days after his daring escape, records show that on May 19, 1862, Sia enlisted in the Union Navy for a three-year term on the Monitor while it was stationed on the James River. He served as a first-class boy and possibly as a cook on board the ship. He completed his term on board the Monitor, as well as many other ships, including the Brandywine, the Florida, and the Commodore Barney. 
While slavery was abolished in the North, African Americans still dealt with racial tensions amongst Union sailors. George S. Gear, the engineer yeoman on board the USS Monitor, wrote about Saya in his letters to his wife. This one I wrote you we had for a cook has gotten quite important already. And one of the sailors, he had some lip too, gave him a smack over the mouth for which the present has learned him his place. He began to think himself as good as a white man, and I must say, he does know as much as some of these sailors. Another former slave that served on board the USS Monitor was Daniel Moore. He was the son of Sarah and Henry Moore, who were the slaves of Jesse Ewell in Northern Virginia. It is believed that Daniel Moore and another contraband arrived on the Monitor on the 13th of November, 1862, while the ironclad was anchored off the coast of Newport News, Virginia. Although not much is known about the crewman, it is known that he served as a landsman while on board the ship. However, on December 31st, 1862, Daniel Moore perished during the sinking of the USS Monitor. He was never married and had no children. Runaway slaves were not the only blacks that served in the Union Navy. Free blacks also served on the USS Monitor. William H. Nichols, who was described as a dark-skinned mulatto, was from New York and was transferred on board the Monitor from the ship, the North Carolina. He served as an officer's steward until the sinking of the Monitor in the winter of 1862. Although only pension records exist, it was known that by 1899, he was 57 years of age and was suffering from rheumatism, impaired eyesight, kidney trouble, and deafness. George Gere wrote extensive letters to his wife and often wrote about other African Americans that sought refuge on the ship. In a letter addressed to his wife on May 20th, 1862, Gere mentions that many runaway slaves came to the ship at night, but the crew had to send them away because they had no room for them. Gere also stated that about 8 to 10 African Americans were brought on board the Galena, another Union ship, in order to make up for the sailors that were killed or wounded. On May 24th, Gere showed his dismay of the contrabands coming on board the ship. We had another of the contrabands come on board this morning. I wish they would send every one of them back as fast as they came. Although little records exist of all the African Americans that served on board the USS Monitor, their contributions were significant. The African Americans, like Sia Carter and Daniel Moore, managed to escape their bondage despite the dangers in order to serve a cause that they felt was just and right, a cause for freedom and equality. And free blacks, like William H. Nichols, wanted to serve their country as well as a cause that divided a nation but united African Americans. William F. Keeler pointed out the spirit amongst those former slaves in a letter to his wife. I never would have believed that a common plantation Negro would be brought to face a white man. I supposed that everything in the shape and spirit and self-respect had been crushed out of them generations back, but I'm glad to find myself mistaken.